Welcome back everyone. So in this video I'm just really going through the detail of some of the code that I've developed for the monoboard project. Now most of these code modules are going to be usable in other projects as well. The first one I want to look at is the state machine. So I've done a little bit of research on uh, state machines thinking I'd just use another library but look when I looked at it most of the libraries I checked out were pretty heavy on resources so I've just put together a library that's nice and lightweight but does everything I actually need. So let's take a look at it now. Okay, well as promised, I'm going to take a look at some of the code modules that I've put together for the mono board, and the first of those is the state machine. So uh, let's just run through how to get a copy of my code to start off with. It's actually on my GitHub site, and I'll put a link to the actual URL uh, down below but if we just navigate to the actual GitHub project, here's the library files that you'll need. And there's a little bit of information there about how to actually use it. But uh, what we really want to do is get a zip file and that's finished downloading. And I'll just copy it to the desktop here just for convenience. So now if we just start up, the Arduino software. So once the Arduino software is up and running, what we want to do is go to sketch, uh, include library, and we want to add a zip library. And it's on our desktop, and there it is there. So just select the file, click choose, and that will import that library. So now if we go up to file, uh, examples we've got an entry in there for GOT state machine called flash so we might just open that as a starting point so the way the state machine is implemented is we have this library that looks after all the background tasks and all of the actual states are implemented as functions with the state name and in those functions we actually execute the state logic and then we implement any transitions that need to happen after that. So it's fairly simple. Those functions will just be called by the library at the period you determine. And when the transitions identify that the machine needs to move to a new state, then that's what will happen. Okay, so let's have a look at the example. First of all, we need to actually include the header file for the library and we're just going to flash the onboard lead on and off. So I'm just defining the pin as 13. Next thing I do is in instantiate the actual state machine and I'm passing a value of 50 through, which means the state machine is going to execute every 50 milliseconds. So the next thing I do is just provide some function prototypes for the actual state. So there'll be two states in this case, lead on and lead off. Okay, then we just move into the setup function and in there, we're just setting the pin mode on that lead pin to be an output. And then all we're doing is actually setting the starting state. So just passing lead off as the starting state into the actual state machine. Okay, and then if we look at the loop, it's fairly straightforward as well. It's just calling the execute method on that state machine. Okay, so let's have a look at the states now. So as I mentioned, there's two states, lead off and lead on. And the first thing we do in the state functions is carry out the state logic. And in the lead off state, we're just turning off the lead. So we do a digital write to the lead pin and set it to low. And in the lead on state, 
we're simply setting that output to be high. So after we complete any state logic that needs to happen in each state, then we actually check for any transitions. So this is a fairly straightforward one. We're just checking if a 1000 millisecond delay is complete in that state. And we do that by calling the is delay complete and just passing through the delay period. If it is, then what we do is we just call the change state function and pass it through the actual state that we'd like the machine to move to and then we just return and we're doing that in both of those state functions just checking if the time is up if it is then changing to the other state as i say this is probably the simplest of simple functions but uh, let's just give that an upload and as you can see the lead is blinking on and off with one second on and one second off so nice and simple to implement and it doesn't use a whole lot of memory i just want to think about another scenario as well maybe you've got a state where when that state is entered you only want it to process some certain um, code once and then as long as it stays in that state it doesn't get processed again in the state logic if we just check the method is first time then it will be true for the first time that that state actually gets processed and after that it will return a false so you can put any logic that you'd like to just process when the state is entered into a simple if statement like that and that takes care of that scenario the other scenario that I'd like to discuss is with transitions. Now, we've got some very simple code here where we're just swapping between one state and the other. However, if you had a state that had maybe five different transitions on it to five other states, then what you're going to need to do is to have a think about the priority that you want those transitions processed in and the highest priority transition you'll want to do first. So you'll do that check, and if it's true, then change state, and then do a return so that it won't process any of the other transitions as well. So you can see the order that they're processed in is quite important because it'll determine which state actually does get transitioned to if two of those states may actually become true at the same time. Okay, so look, that's pretty much it. It's a fairly simple state machine. If you've got any questions, then please leave them in the comments below or contact me on Facebook. I'm only too happy to help if you've got any questions. Okay, cheers for now. So let's take a look at the guts of this class. If you go into your Arduino libraries folder, you'll find the actual library that you imported here. And if we open up that folder, the two files that are the guts of this library are the state machine header and the actual code file. So let's have a look at the header down here to where we're just declaring a type of function pointer that we'll be using for calling the actual state functions and then the actual class definition itself. The public functions at the top and then we've got some private variables at the bottom so nothing too exciting there but let's have a look at the actual code so first of all we've got the instantiation of the class here and we pass the time through that just gets saved to a local variable execute time and we just set up some of the other uh, important parameters last process time to start delay already processed and things like that the next thing we come to is the set start state and we pass through the actual name of the function there or what we're doing in here is just initializing the last state process time with a millis read and then calling the change state function with that particular state and lo and behold the change state function is the next one and it just saves that new state that's passed to it into the current state of the machine and sets already processed to be false and change state to be true just some housekeeping things that will be used in the execute 
the executes next. So here, the first thing it does is set the uh, change date to be false and reads the loop time using millis. And then it does a comparison. If the loop time minus the last loop time processed is greater than the execute time, then we need to do the stuff inside here. If, it, if it's not already processed, then it sets the delay start time to be the loop time. This is the first time through, and we're just going to grab the delay start time because we're going to compare that down the track to see if it's been in the state longer than a particular time. Then we actually execute the current state. So this is actually calling the function that is loaded into current state. And at the end of that, we set the last state process time to be the loop time. And if it's not changed, we set already processed to be true. Now, the reason this is here is because in that current state function, that's where we actually do the transition checks. So if we do a transition check there, we will actually be calling change state potentially. So after this function, when setting the already process, we just need to be mindful that we may have actually called for a change of state. And we obviously don't want to set the already processed at that point in time. However, if we are in the same state and we haven't changed state, then after we've gone through it once, we obviously want to set the already processed. And that's what that little bit of code is doing there. Okay, the only other two things in here are the is first time, which just looks at the already processed and, and returns appropriately. And also the is delay complete function which is just doing a comparison against that delay time. So it's fairly straightforward. It just grabs a time from millis and does a simple check if the loop time is minus the start delay is greater than delay period, then it returns true. So that's it for that class too. Pretty straightforward. If you like what I'm doing, then please do like the video. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. And don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.